Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane. This video is part of my gadget review series, and today we're going to be talking about console mods and hacks. Console mods and hacks have been around ever since consoles have been around, uh, be it with you know, changing the output of a game to improving the quality uh, to enabling, you know, to play software that wasn't originally intended to be played on the console. Um, these are just a few of the ones that I've either looked at quite a bit or have done myself. Um, now recently in years I've decided that uh, personally that in do doing anything that actually like uh, permanently damages or, or uh, changes the machine um, you know is is probably not for me anymore I don't I don't want to do uh, RGB mods or HDMI mods or anything like that on my consoles um, but uh, when I first got some of my consoles I actually did modify f a few of them uh, the first one I did was uh, I put an S-Video and Universal BIOS kit on my Neo Geo home system. Um, I mainly did this because uh, back then I didn't have an alternative when I first got the system. Um, there was no alternative to uh, you know, using the original what, like 8-DIN port on the back to uh, output, output a clean signal. And the only way to really get a clean signal was to basically use an S-Video kit, which meant drilling holes in the back of the system, which I deeply regret, um, or I deeply regret now. You know, I live with it and and everything, and I've since gone back and cleaned things up and, and made things look a little bit nicer and stuff like that, and uh, re-secured uh, some of my bad early soldering jobs and stuff like that, but um, you know, if I had to do it over again, I would have waited to do a uh, what people call a seamless mod where it does not look like the system has been modified. Um, uh, the next thing is uh, actually a hack uh, is the Sega Saturn Atlas um, um, also known as the pseudo Saturn and various other things and it's basically you just take an action replay with the uh, with the 4-in-1 uh, capabilities and you put a custom firmware on it so that you can play backups. Um, and this is great for like testing out a game to see if you really want to put down the money uh, for like one of the more expensive titles to see whether or not you'd actually enjoy that game. Um, you know, and all it does is it strips the ability for the console to be able to detect if a game is, uh, you know, been a burn or not um, if it's on a CDR. Uh, you know, it doesn't really do anything beyond that, uh, to my knowledge. But uh, ag again, it's a really neat mod, or a really neat hack. Um, I've actually used it to play Police Knots, uh, a translated copy, because I wanted to play it in, in in English. You know, I wanted to get the full the full storyline. And the only way to really for me to really do that and play it on original hardware is to uh, burn a copy of it that has been uh, fan translated. Uh, the next hack is uh, free McBoot for the PlayStation 2. Uh, basically this is just uh, another uh, soft mod uh, like the, the one for the Saturn um, but you can do and unlock all kinds of other things with this. Uh, you can play games from flash drives, you can uh, play games or rip games to the internal hard drive if you have one of the older PlayStation 2s. Um, you can play uh, burns of games and I mean all kinds of stuff and it's it's a really interesting uh, piece of software. I have not fully uh, experienced all of it yet uh, but I mean you know being able to play any of the fan translations and stuff like that of any RPGs that did not come over out here in the US, I'm all for being able to do stuff like that. Uh, it's a fairly easy mod to do. Um, uh, I actually used the uh, the USB uh, PlayStation 3 memory card reader and some of the specialized software to do that. 
to get my copy of Free McBoot up and running. Um, and there are people that actually like do it as a service for other people as well uh, out there on the, on the internet. All you have to do is basically go search for it and uh, you should be able to find it fairly easily. Um, next is another kind of a software mod. It's more of a boot disk. Uh, it's the old uh, PS Exchange on the PlayStation 1. Uh, this thing was mainly put out so that you can play import games, and a few people actually figured out that you could play burn games with it as well. Um, but, you know, just being able to play, like, import PlayStation 1 games is a wonderful treat for me to be able to do that as well. Uh, now, a mod that does take a little bit of hardware, uh, you know, messing around with is the Dreamcast battery slot. Um, as as the Dreamcast has gotten older and mine is, as well, uh, the uh, CR2032 battery, which is the one that holds all the clock and stuff like that, uh, goes out and uh, you know the Dreamcast won't let you go any further until you actually correct the time and that becomes annoying after a while. So uh, I desoldered mine off and went out and purchased uh, a a slot that will fit in there and soldered it in and actually purchased a uh, good CR2032 rechargeable battery to put in there as well and haven't had a problem with it since. Um, now there's another uh, mod for Dreamcast which I have not done yet but uh, when I used to work at a used video game store I saw tons and tons of Dreamcast that came in where the controller port had been burned out by some you know, chintzy third-party controller that just didn't get the voltages right and blew the fuse and when that happens it doesn't kill just that port it kills all four ports and uh, the the mod that I'm looking at doing next for my Dreamcast is the controller port resettable fuse so basically uh, this is just some sort of fuse that replaces the normal fuse on the Dreamcast controller port so that it resets itself so even if you blow it by you know plugging in a controller or doing something wrong to the Dreamcast uh, you can just unplug it and unplug the Dreamcast itself and just you know wait a few minutes and the fuse will reset itself on its own you plug everything back up and you're good to go um, you know very good mod I highly suggest it for everyone I definitely suggest the uh, battery slot mod for the Dreamcast as well. Um, my next console thing that I've uh, done, and this really isn't much of a mod, it's more of a, uh, uh, you know, just add-ons that kind of clip onto the system, is the Xbox One cooler and external hard drive enclosure. Um, the Xbox One did not come with enough storage in my mind, uh, especially with the way that they basically install every game to the hard drive like it's a computer, which you know consoles nowadays are definitely more computer than they are console. But 500 gigs is not enough. Um, so I turned around and I bought a uh, little you know little black device that, fits onto the side that contains a two terabyte hard drive and then you know I wanted my console to stay nice and cool and not have any issues so I bought an external fan cooler that that kind of latches onto the top of it as well and so far I've been very happy with both devices um, it definitely eliminates the issues of having to install and uninstall games as I want to play them you know I don't want to uninstall a game I want to be able to pop the disc in and play it right away. And that's what I get with having my Xbox One modifications that I've done. And again, yeah, they're not really mods, they're just kind of external add-ons, but I figured I would include them in this video as well. Uh, that's it. Um, I would definitely be interested in hearing what you guys have done to modify your systems to improve either the video quality or anything like that. I'd like to hear your feelings on what you believe are good mods and what are bad mods and stuff. Um, you know, uh, these aren't all the mods I've done. Uh, I just now recently remembered that I've actually disabled my Nest 10 chip on my NES. Um, you know, and 
I, I do know that people go out there and want to say that you know a mod is like you know recapping a system and replacing all all the some of the failing internal parts. And I don't really consider those mods. I consider those repairs. Uh, and yes, I have actually done that to my NES as well. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.